Welcome all. Uh, welcome to this Mint and Microsoft powered uh, roundtable on digital natives, where the theme under discussion is how do startups, which are also called digital natives, uh, can scale on cloud. Uh, with us, we have a very strong and high powered uh, lineup of CXOs uh, serving DN businesses across India. I'm Vatsal Gaur, uh, the moderator for today. And um, in terms of today's discussion, uh, you know, we'll go through a, a round robin sequence of questions that uh, will probably enable a deeper understanding for uh, the people watching and listening in uh, later on what aspects of cloud and what are the kind of uh, benefits, but also maybe some of the improvements that can be made to the infrastructure. Um, how have companies benefited from this? Uh, and what is the future track trajectory that technology in general will adopt? And how does that interplay uh, with storage based uh, solutions? Uh, tell us, like, in terms of just e com express, how have you leveraged cloud to build your differentiated business model, uh, which is built on delivery service capability, scalability, customization? and sustainability. So how do you make sure that the entire stack is actually geared up to become very flexible and it is able to scale up to that level? Um, thankfully, we were a service oriented, uh, you know, setup. So we were able to compartmentalize things. We knew where we had to put a lot more compute, where we could actually do some more modifications. Um, you know, the way the data lake has been constructed, the way data science algorithms have been put to action. All of that has actually happened over a period of time, which has helped us reach to a level where we can bring that operating leverage, uh, which is really required in a very uh, operations heavy, I would say, space. Um, and the kind of delta that you create in terms of yield versus cost per shipment is all basis how quickly you can deliver, reliably you can deliver with the least amount of loss. Um, and technology is playing a central part. And scaling of the technology happens very naturally in the cloud. Um, if it were done any other way, I think it would have taken us a lot longer to build that kind of a scale. One of the more prominent Web3 companies to come out of India, uh, focusing on NFTs. Uh, how have you seen, uh, you know, how have you seen the startup industry leveraging crowd in general? And how is it shaping up maybe in the Web3 sort of sense? Talking about, you know, uh, from perspective of cost and everything, it is a decision between you know, upfront payment or CAPEX on on-prem or, uh, you know, uh, you go on a cloud and on a regular basis, you need to make payments or you you need to make the payments based on how you how cloud you are, how much of cloud you are using. So that also uh, becomes a very key aspect whenever a new startup or a, uh, uh, somebody is launching. So at the early phase of a time uh, of a startup, obviously cloud makes a much better sense uh, rather than going on-prem. You don't know how many users are you going to get. Uh, more so in the D2C space. So from that perspective, obviously, cloud makes a big sense for anybody who is starting up. And that's what we have been seeing with multiple startups. Uh, Web3, yes, uh, as in still early, early days for anybody in India as of now. So we'll see how it pans out. But uh, it offers a lot of, you know, uh, flexibility and reliability when you compare with other options. Pariksha, the question is like, how are startups partnering with uh, established uh, industry enterprise players to build an ecosystem for uh, innovation? Uh, so it, you, you have to always take a collaborative approach. And, and I think, um, you know, with whatever interactions we've had, um, I, I do believe that those, th those players also see it, see it the same way. So for, for instance, in context to the cloud discussion that you know, the other panelists were sharing, uh, you know, we are sort of born cloud native businesses. Uh, in a traditional old school banking ecosystem with you know large legacy book of record systems, uh, that's a transition that even if they want, it's very hard for them to make, right? Uh, so if you uh, you know have a collaborative approach where you say, okay, you know we're we're doing this business together, where you lend us onto a platform, you know why don't we learn something from you and then you know you take those learnings from us? Um, and the way it's it's actually worked out for us is as you scale the business. You know, earlier on for everyone, it's actually very easy to say, okay, okay, we are here to disrupt. These guys are doing it differently and we can add a lot more efficiencies. But, you know, when you, so we're now six years into the business, we have about a couple of million customers that transact monthly on the platform. Uh, you realize that uh, traditional business models and the incumbents actually do have something to offer in terms of the systems, the processes and the rigor that they've actually put together. That in terms of adoption at scale, uh, you know, when you look at uh, adopting technology at scale, 
um, with just the fact that there's so many number of transactions increasing um, and service availability requirements within your organization, how is your what's your strategy at, at an organizational level to kind of ensure that there is business continuity and that the DNA of your business uh, is maintained? So any idea which is related to logistics, if it's not central to the idea of uh, making that logistic human and not thinking of the driver, which is actually running the truck, will not result you to any change in ecosystem because nothing has been changed in the last 150 years for a truck driver. So the way we look at it is, uh, with our relay model and with the strength of what relay model is, where it creates a value for the guy who sends the material, the one who drives it and the one who owns the vehicle. We are able to bring our driver back to home. We are able to bring all those respect which is required to him. And we are able to actually execute the truck and run that truck for about 2.5 times better than our computer. And this is a fantastic indigenous Indian idea, right? Founded by Mr. Deepakar. The idea which is so noble, which goes in the, uh, in the way of creating values and reducing our GDP cost to 7%, which is equivalent to US, we, we have to take the support of tech, right? And how do we take this type of support? It's not only thinking of building logistics in marketplace model, but there are not many things which can be done at home. One of the technological challenges that you faced uh, while establishing successful enterprise and executing digital transformation technology operations across the group, um, any specific tech challenges uh, that you might want to share with us? So, uh, technical technological challenge that came to us uh, ha and st that's still there uh, has been that when all these four different operating companies started growing in their own silos. So, how do we bring the best value to an end consumer co interacting with us as a group as Girnarsoft? So, when you come to us with the thought that let me buy a new car but also trade my used car. And then while doing that, would I also want a financing option for my new car that I want to buy? And then how do I handle my insurance? So as a group, uh, we are operating a very large ecosystem. But then there are challenges on how do we give our end user a seamless experience across all four different operating companies. Now that would that has its own set of advantages to us business wise. Our CAC goes down, uh, customer gets better experience. Uh, we get customers hooked on to our platform, you don't need to go and work on four different separate platforms. Uh, tell us, like, how does one address the dual challenge of innovation and dynamic competition? I think the important part for any uh, organization is just to understand that uh, an equilibrium needs to be maintained uh, between both the things. You need to focus on the current competition uh, as well as also focus on the innovation part. Um, Having said that, I think the way um, the world has moved in last one or two decades, uh, I think the market has slightly skewed more towards the innovation part. And rightfully so, because uh, if an organization is not innovating, or I would say if, the market, if an organization is not working towards a, a term called creative disruption mode, um, they would never be be able to mon you know monopolize the market. So I think that 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 brings me to a, a theory which was given by one of the uh, Austrian American uh, economists who once said that if an organization is only focusing on the current competition um, and not really thinking of the innovation, that they will never be able to be they will never be able to be a market leader. In, in, in the long run. So what is your personal view on whether cloud can actually have a potential to make startups achieve their goal and how does it uh, sort of operate in terms of both innovation and scalability in the coming years? So what do you think is the role of cloud in both innovation and scalability? The first and foremost uh, you know, tenet behind innovation and, and scalability is rapid iteration. How have you seen cloud sort of help you in uh, cracking the community angle because you know gaming is all about community and um, and also markets especially in smaller cities and towns because that's also a large amount of the market share that Winzo has so within tier 2 to tier 5 let's say uh, how have you seen adoption of cloud helping your business let's uh, talk about the pandemic area right so 
uh, after pandemic everybody is working from home or you know uh, staying at home playing games so let things of uh, on prem servers if we are on on prem scaling the server can be another problem for us right so we are not solving for our uh, you know core technology or core product but we are say, uh, serving uh, solving for the scale of the servers right uh, ram increasing or you know virtualization of things so it's reinventing the wheel, wheel right so cloud is helping us on such a way ki uh, you can create your application now other you know business uh, holders have the capability to scale your business to get into you know term where you can scale your business into extent uh, you just need to create the content you just need to you know solve for the idea and uh, this this is way uh, how cloud is helping us to you know get into gaming and what is uh, in your definition how do you think that uh, pristine care has really scaled since its inception in 2018 uh, and what role has cloud played in that uh, growth uh, the biggest challenge that we have is essentially delivering safe surgeries at scale in the very very distributed network so you're talking of 400 surgeons working discreetly across 42 cities uh, across 500 hospitals 30 insurance companies which and that whole ecosystem has to come together to deliver a very safe uh, surgical experience and if you think about it uh, there are many many uh, overlapping ecosystems so you know there there are there are clinics there are doctors there is a receptionist there is a care coordinator who sort of acts like a concierge for the for the surgery there is the hospital there is the insurance company uh, you know there are some care buddies on the ground uh, there are this back end support there's finance billing etc and everything has to come together and essentially the handshakes have to be absolutely seamless across each each ecosystem for the surgery experience to be seamless which is essentially what pristine care stands for and uh, we do this through about uh, 35 apps that we built internally uh, for each of our teams uh, and, and a case sort of transitions from one to the other to the other seamlessly to make uh, you know the experience uh, excellent i would like to ask you that in terms of just the fact that you know you're representing microsoft and helping digital native businesses on board and also help their journey using cloud uh, how have you seen this help the evolution of uh, young companies that are maturing and Microsoft being able to be part of that mature, maturing stage? See, what differentiates a digital native <clears throat> from a traditional enterprise is the agility with which they, they use technology to solve core business problems. And as, as every leader was speaking, I, I was making notes and the themes which you guys touched upon to me are are, are worth of, you know, like uh, months, months long discussions if you have with experts. That is what all of you kind of articulated. And I think I summarized, I, I got a summary of that as crisp and as powerful. So the ability of this, uh, of digital native startups to solve business problems to span across customer experience, as uh, as you spoke about, right, uh, Anshuman, like we should not forget customer experience while we are building great technology, scalability and reliability. As, as someone else spoke about, uh, as how they are they are leveraging cloud to make sure that when the businesses need peak and trough scaling up and scaling down, it happens automatically. Uh, it's around opex. How do you really bring down the cost of transaction? How do you make uh, look at the TCO of technology and use technology to bring down bring in profitability? And as we are seeing more and more companies maturing, uh, more and more companies looking forward to listing in various stock exchanges. They are realizing the importance of, of being profitable, uh, of, of being able to uh, serve customers, serve businesses in a way that they generate shareholder returns. And technology plays a huge role because uh, it is that is a sum total of how well you're serving customers, how well you're innovating on product offerings, how well your internal employees are collaborating. Great, I think that's a that's a really useful sort of even a summation of you know what we've learned uh, today, Abhishek. And it's been honestly, it's been a Crossfire between sectors including healthcare, Web3, fintech, e-commerce, gaming. So it's it's also been a very enlightening discussion, I'm sure, for everyone who gets a chance to hear this. Um, with that said, I, I would like to sort of uh, formally uh, close this uh, roundtable. It's, it's been extremely enlightening uh, and also really enjoyable for me as a moderator. Uh, and I'm hopeful that this was engaging for all panelists. Mm -hmm.